Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Joe Macari, I'm able to bring you an in-depth tour of the only full-bodied, exposed carbon Ferrari Enzo in the world. The Enzo was crafted as a marker to the success Ferrari had during the preceding F1 championships, and as a replacement to the F50, limited to just 399 models, as the 400th was gifted to Pope John Paul II, the Enzo is a stripped-out, performance-orientated vehicle. Thanks to its monocoque, aluminium space frame and being devoid of many creature comforts, it has a curb weight of 1480kg. This specific car originally came in Rosso Corsa, but was sent back to Marinello to have its custom specification applied. It features decorative Rosso carbon inside and out, and the unmissable red quilted interior, with many other individual style points. It is powered by a rear mid-mounted 6.0-litre V12, which produces 651 brake horsepower and 657 newton metres of torque. This output results in a 0-62mph, to 62 mile per hour, or 100kmph time, of just 3.2 seconds, and a top speed of 212 miles per hour. This Enzo sits on 19-inch front and rear, carbon multi-spoke wheels with centre-locking wheel nuts, and prancing horse emblazoned dust caps. The brakes for the Enzo were inspired by F1 tech of the time, being made from carbon-reinforced silicon carbide ceramic discs. Now we've looked at the car's history and specs, let's take a closer look from front to back. At the front and rear, the car utilises active aero technology to enhance dynamic capabilities when needed. Like the 458, the Enzo has active aero within the air intakes at the front, the diffuser at the rear and rear wing, which pushes up at high speed to increase downforce, but does not act as an air brake. The front intakes also provide a cooling function with radiators and fans. The F1-style wing segment at the front wraps around the side and gradually flattens out. Above are very narrow xenon headlamps with the unmissable and characteristic aero channel that directs air from the front intakes over the bonnet, wheel arches and laterally. There is a small reflector and light just before the front wheels. Atop of the carbon wheel arches are the slim aero-focused adjustable wing mirrors. The customary scooter rear shields sit just below and behind these. Just like with its older brother, the F40, the Enzo has very angular shoulders and sits proud of the main body. Behind and above, the slight, manually operated windows are quite elegantly shaped in my opinion. The way the roof is segmented suggests that the very individual way this Ferrari's doors open, but we will return to that later in the video. Moving down, we find the mechanical key lock, and behind, the small slit where the release mechanism lives. Above and behind is the petrol cap. The car's wide front wheel arches are mirrored at the rear, and are connected by a wide side skirt that creates an indented door aesthetic but it's far more purposeful than that. This way, air is forced from the front vents to the rear cooling ducts. Cooling for the rear brakes is also provided below. This Enzo maintains a sloping and angular rear section, but with one change. Custom text has been added to the rear spoiler. I think it says Dino Ferrari. The iconic rear lights that sit behind actually remind me of salt and pepper shakers, but they work well aesthetically. Quad exhausts sit below with an accentuated carbon diffuser that I unfortunately wasn't able to get a proper shot of. Now we've finished the exterior tour, let's move inside. The Enzo has the iconic mechanical Ferrari key with a small Ferrari key ring. The doors, however, are less normal. This is the first production Ferrari to have butterfly doors. The interior itself is a surprisingly luxurious space. It's finished in Rosso Carbon and Alcantara and is rather bold. Despite its sheer Rosso carbon seal, the Enzo isn't actually that hard to ingress and egress. Before going through the interior in detail, I will first take you on a short POV tour.
To open the doors, simply press up on the release mechanism found inside the small groove and lift up. The doors here are finished mainly in Rosso carbon with a quilted Alcantara segment at the top. They have a hollowed out design for weight saving with the simple plastic release mechanism and mechanical window wiper further forward. The rear engine cover release lever is found at the rear panel when the door is up. The Rosso carbon seal runs from here into the front wheel arch where the front boost release catch is located and the vehicle number plate, this being the final production model, number 399. The driver's side air vent is the first thing we see with the exterior light controls engineered onto a single stalk to the left of the wheel. The multifunctional wheel itself is upholstered in Rosso Alcantara and carbon and offers a great size and feel. It has the iconic gear change F1 style LEDs on top with the indicators on each side and a trip and vehicle lift settings on the left and drive mode settings on the right. On either side are the Rosso carbon gear paddles. With a shift time of just 150 milliseconds, the six-speed semi-automatic gearbox reflects its F1 base as well. The sheer amount of visible carbon is in part thanks to Enzo's monocoque design that provides heightened levels of rigidity, safety, and significantly reduced weight. The Enzo was one of the first production cars to include a monocoque as part of its design. With weight saving always in mind, the central column is very minimalist. It provides only what is truly necessary. At the top are two air vents that rotate 360 degrees and spin to lock and open. Below these are basic ventilation and air conditioning controls. There is a small button array below this that includes the start-stop button, the hazard lights, parking sensors, lights and controls for the wing mirrors. Below this is a simple plaque designed in the same style as that on the rear of the exterior. There are two moderately sized open storage compartments in the central column with netting between the seats. Above this is a small port window that offers an interior view of the engine bay. Moving down, there are custom-made Enzo embroidered floor mats on each side, and unsurprisingly, there's no glove box on the passenger side. On the opposing side to the model number plaque, there is a small commemoration of the preceding F1 victories that inspired this car's creation. Let's take a look at the Enzo seats. The carbon bucket seats are also upholstered in Rosso Alcantara and are surprisingly comfortable. I'm not sure if these reflect standard Enzo seats, but they offer plenty of support and comfort and can be adjusted using the handle to the side and grip underneath. They are fitted with these multi-point harnesses. Let's take a look at the Enzo's minimal exterior storage capacity. This car has a fitted luggage and tool set, but according to several articles, the Enzo has a max storage capacity of 350 litres without it. Despite being standard gloss carbon on the outside, the inside of the boot lid is Rosso carbon, and finished to perfection. Back to the interior, and there is a small reading light built centrally into the quilted Alcantara with slim, non-illuminated sun visors. So that concludes my tour of this unique Ferrari Enzo. Apologies for the camera work, but I had to work in very confined spaces to record this. However, I hope you still enjoyed the video. Thanks again to the team at Joe Macari for the opportunity. You can find all of their contact details in the description below. Please subscribe for the latest content, and until next time, cheers.